Bonjour, mon ami. Welcome back to another book review episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and if you've been watching the channel recently, you know that I've been going through a whole series of videos on French rifles. In particular, we've been doing the Berthier system, but uh, that will continue in the future with Lebel's, Moss 36, and then the series of French semi-auto rifles. So, while we're looking at all of those guns, I figured it would be an appropriate time to take a look at the books that are available in English about French military firearms. We're going to be going through five today, and that sounds like a lot, but it's really a pretty sparse selection, and ultimately there is no good overall book on French military firearms written in English. There have been a number of pieces published in French in the last few years um, that, that are certainly much better than what's available in English. We'll touch on that at the end. So, first thing we're going to take a look at here is French Military Weapons by Major James Hicks. This, uh, from the outset, would appear to be the best single reference source. Uh, it covers, apparently, 1717 through 1938, uh, firearms, swords, bayonets, ammunition, artillery, and ordnance equipment. And it's published by Flaterman, which is a really good name in American uh, collectible antique firearms. However, unfortunately, this... well, let me put it this way, this book has been out of print for like 40 years, and it'll still cost you less than 40 bucks. Uh, if the book's out of print and it's any good, the price goes way up. The problem with this is that it has basically zero detail. Uh, this was actually originally a typed manuscript printed, I think they did a, a limited run of like 2,000 copies, by uh, Major Hicks in 1938. And that's why the book ends at 1938, is because that's the year it was written. Uh, it was then, the, the rights to it, the copyright, was acquired by Flaterman in the 60s, and he reprinted the batch of this style. They actually put it in proper typeface and printed it as a book instead of like a staple-bound pamphlet. Uh, what it does include is, of course, a very long time period. The problem is I'm hard-pressed to, to say how accurate it is. When it gets to the modern guns, the ones that I'm familiar with, it's mostly accurate, but there are some inadequacies in it. There are things that it refers to as major changes in the guns that don't actually match with the formal change designations. Um, there's some material in there that's just not quite right. Um, there are no photographs. Uh, all of the illustrations in this book are hand-drawn plates. Uh, and it's clear that some of this was translated from French, because there's some terminology in there that is, clearly is not uh, native English. So, uh, but overall, the biggest problem is that it has literally no detail. It will give you a plate drawing of a side or both sides of an item, and a name, and literally two to three sentences of description, and that's it. So, if you are designing a 300-year-long role-playing game, or a 200-year-long role-playing game, and you wanted everything the French military used over that time period, this would be a good reference. If you're actually looking to learn about the guns more than just what did they use in what year, well, you're going to want something better than this. All right, next up is probably the best uh, of the books that we're going to be looking at today, and that is Proud Promise by Jean Un. Un? I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, he is a French uh, firearms expert, lives in France, and uh, does speak English. And this book is in good English, uh, with the help of an editor. This was, of course, published by Collector Grade Publications, which is probably the top name in serious, really in-depth technical firearms reference books. So anything published by Collector Grade, I will happily read, uh, and this is no exception. Now, this specific book is French Auto-Loading Rifles, 1898 through 1979. And this covers the development of, basically, uh, there's a little bit of coverage of the RSC 1917 and 1918. Not a lot. There's not a lot printed about that in any language. Uh, it does cover a remarkable amount of information about the French prototype, the, the development of self-loading rifles. So there were three, in total, there were three development branches of self-loading rifles, the A, the B, and the C series. Uh, one of them, the A series, did actually get produced early in World War I, uh, the A6. Um, but only in like a thousand or less than a thousand produced. Uh, the C series, uh, we have a previous video on an example from the C series. A lot of these things are really pretty shrouded in mystery. 
Uh, these were all developed by the French military. There were no patents taken out because they were considered military state secrets at the time. And a lot of the information on this sort of development is still classified secret in France. So the most that anybody has ever been able to find and print is what's in this book. Now, it does have a substantial amount of information on the development of the Moss 40, which became the 44, which became the 49, which became the 4956. So that is the standard, the, the major first fully adopted French semi-auto rifle. Uh, and all the weird developmental idiosyncrasies of that and, and experimental versions of it. It's an excellent book covering that. Uh, it is relatively short for a collector grade book, uh, which I forgot to look up beforehand, just under 200 pages. However, well, however, it was easily, easily recommendable, totally worth getting. And it is now out of print. Uh, and I took a quick look when I started filming, and it looks like you can get this for a little bit under 100 bucks right now on Amazon. But being out of print, it's limited availability. If you can find a copy, get a copy because it is well worth it. Next up, we have Honor Bound, and this is by Gérard de Masson and Yves Bouffeton. And it is a book about the development of the Shosha automatic rifle. So if you are interested in World War I, well, the Shosha was the most produced machine gun, automatic weapon, of the entire war. If you're interested in French arms, the Shosha is one of the very interesting ones. It is a pretty unique gun. Uh, it's a long recoil light machine gun, which is something that, uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of a single other example. It is a much derided gun, but it was also a cornerstone of French military armament during World War I for the infantry. So uh, this book is also well, well worth getting. It's another collector grade publications book. That alone should tell you pretty much everything you need to know. Uh, it is also pretty much limited to the Shosha. So doesn't really talk about Labelles or Berthiers or any of the post-World War I uh, French rifles, the Moss 36, the Châtellerault machine guns, none of that stuff is in here. However, this one is the one book in this uh, whole video that is still in print. So you can get this from Collector Grade for 40 bucks, and you can probably find it on Amazon a few dollars even cheaper than that. Um, I guarantee you it will be going, it, they will run out of them at some point, and then the price will do exactly what it did with Proud Promise and probably double, if not go higher, and then if you want one after that you'll regret it and you'll be like, ah, do I really want to spend $100 on another, like, 200-page book? Well, the answer is this has all of the information you'll be able to find in English on the Shosha, uh, and it has it in English, In you can actually understand it, you don't have to find some, you don't have to learn another language to read it, and right now you can get it cheap. So, strongly encourage you to get a copy of this if you have any interest in French firearms. All right, I kind of lied, we're actually doing six books. Uh, and the next one we're going to take a look at is the last of the books that cover long guns, and that is The Last Bolt Gun by Steve Jackson. This uh, is currently in, in print, sort of, because I believe it is a print-on-demand book. This actually started as an ebook, um, and it's, I mean, it's not, not even glossy pages. This is a, an economy style of book, let's put it that way. Uh, all black and white, and page count on it, I again forgot to look this up, is 90 three pages. So it's short. Um, there's not a lot of information in here. You know, the text is large. There are a lot of pictures that take up space. However, for a book on the Moss 36, this is as good as it gets right now in English. Uh, the information, there's, there's more information in this probably than in the entire James Hicks uh, book. There's a lot of, if you have a Moss 36, if you have just a passing interest uh, in, for example, World War II firearms, and well, of course, you need a Moss 36 because that's the French World War II firearm. This is a good book to have. Uh, if I recall, the price is right about 20 bucks, $18 or something from Amazon. Uh, it's not going away anytime soon because, like I said, I believe it's print on demand, so there's no stockpile of, you know, pallets of these books waiting to be sold anywhere. Just when you order one, they spit one out and send it off to you. Uh, being an ebook, there is also an ebook version of it if you'd prefer that. I kind of like having the print copy, so I went with that. Um, not anything, you know, this isn't a del delving into the French archives to find out, you know, little known production figures and when exactly small tweaks were made to the design. That's the sort of thing a collector grade book would have. This is an overview of the Moss 36. And for that, it's pretty good. Don't get your hopes up too much, but for a print on demand $20 self published book, very good.
So uh, would not, I would recommend this in lieu of, well, there's nothing else. So, all right, that is it for long guns. And that leaves us with two books on handguns. Now, both of these are predictably out of print now. They were both published in the 90s. Um, first one is French 1935 Pistols by Eugene Medlin and Colin Duan. Um, and it is specifically on the 1935 Pistols. Uh, after World War I, the French military decided that they wanted a standardized new semi-automatic pistol. They'd gone through World War I with a combination of 1892 revolvers and basically French, or, uh, Spanish ruby semi-auto 32 caliber pistols that worked, but weren't exactly dignified. Uh, they were kind of clunky, chintzy pistols. They wanted something new. And it may have taken 15 years after the end of the war, but they finally got it. In fact, they got two of them, the 1935A and the 1935S, both adopted in the 765 Browning long cartridge, which is basically the same as 30 Pedersen. If you're curious about that story, this has it. This is the best you'll find for print information on the development of that cartridge. Uh, the pistols themselves have some interesting history to them. Uh, in particular, the 1935A was basically the model for the SIG P210, which is one of the most fantastic service pistols ever manufactured. Uh, well, the same designer was responsible for it and the 35A, went into production in France first. Um, has a lot of similarities also actually to the Russian Tokarev pistol. So they're, they're good guns. They are underappreciated in the U.S. because the ammunition is literally almost impossible to find for them. So if you're interested in the 35, this is the book to get. It has the developmental history, the production, uh, what happened to these during German occupation, what happened to them afterwards, accessories, holsters, all that sort of material. Um, good book. It is out of print. Costs going to cost you a little under a hundred bucks if you can find a copy. So if you, by the way, if you find one of these at a, uh, at a gun show, pick it up. You know, if, if someone's got it out on the table for 20 bucks or whatever the cover price, cover price was originally 25. If you can find it for anything near that, buy a copy. Uh, even if you don't want it, one of your friends who's interested in French handguns will want it. Um, also, by the way, if you're looking for something to collect, these pistols are pretty cheap because you can't get the ammunition. So there's not a lot of demand for them. And there actually are a fair number of them out there on the market. So if you're looking for a new collection, just something different than everybody else has, well, find a copy of the book, start picking up some interesting French semi-auto pistols. And once you get addicted to those, you'll of course need all of the other French handguns. So the last book that we have here is Military Handguns of France, 1858 to 1958. So hundred years worth. And this is by Eugene Medlin, same author as the 1935 book, and Jean Hoon, same author as the self-loading French rifles book. Um, the difference here, this is about the same size as the one we just looked at, except this covers everything from the 1858 Pinfire revolver up to the uh, Mac 1950, uh, upscale, upsized. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. I have one, eh, it may or may not be in frame. Uh, anyway, it's going to cover the rubies. It's going to cover the Star 1914 pistols that were used, the 1873 revolvers, the 1892 revolvers, the 1858 pin fires, the, the, the 1935A and S, although not nearly to the level of detail that the previous book did. Um, this is a much better overview. It is available a bit cheaper. I believe when I looked these up on Amazon, they were $63, give or take, 65 bucks. It is again out of print. This was published in the early 1990s. Um, there's good tabulated production data in here. It's a very good collector's overview to the guns. So again, if you become interested in French handguns, this is a good book to get. What I wish is that there was a book like this on the rifles, and there just isn't. We've got a little bit of the collector grade approach to specifically semi-auto rifles, and that's about it. So one might think that there could be a solution to that problem, and I think there is. So I'm actually working slowly but surely on my own book covering specifically French military rifles. So. My goal is to have it be something in between a collector grade book and something like this, uh, to do a good overview of Labelle's, Berthier's, Moss 36s, and then the whole series of Moss 40 through 59 semi-auto rifles. With any luck, that'll be available in a year, I hope, less than a year. It depends how long it takes me to actually get writing as long as doing videos like you see here. So. Anyway, uh, I don't want to try and pre-sell that thing before I've even finished writing the manuscript, but there is a significant hole in the market, I think. Um, there's no good reference book on the rifles, and so 
I'm going to try and produce that myself. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you're looking for, if you're interested in French military firearms, this has been an overview. Um, this is everything I've ever been able to find that's printed in English on the subject. So if you do want to go into more detail right now, uh, step one is learn French, and step two is go order some books online, because there are a bunch of French language books that cover a lot more, you know, as you kind of expect. In, in France, they do have some interest in their own firearms history, so there are some books there, but they haven't been translated into English. So anyway, uh, tune back in next week for another book review here on Forgotten Weapons. Thanks for watching.